When Shopify says you can sell anywhere, they mean it. Whether you're at the beach or in the mountains, Shopify is the all-in-one commerce platform that simplifies selling to anyone from anywhere. Don't let the technical stuff slow your sales down. Because with Shopify, you can monitor inventory, track sales, fulfill and ship orders from anywhere with an internet connection. Join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide and start selling with Shopify today. Sign up for a $1 trial at shopify.com slash free 23. Shopify.com slash free 23. Wendy's Coffee House. Hi there, I'm Wendy. Okay, this is part two with Carolyn Woolman. We're continuing our conversation about Helene Hansel, the author of the contesting Name It and Claim It game, and the one that I have right now in contact with other realms, where she goes into being invisible and also levitating, her experience levitating. <laughs> Read the book. She had fun with that. It was kind of a one and done thing. Okay. Moving on to contesting. Contestqueen.com. Carolyn Woolman. They call it different things in different countries. And like the UK and Australia, it's comping because they enter competition. In the States, they enter sweepstakes, so they call it sweeping. In Canada, we enter contests, so we call it contesting. It's all the same thing. We just have different lingo. But what I like about it is that um, it gives people a different avenue. Because one of the things you, you, find, you probably see this in your work is that whenever anybody wants something, they always say, well, I need the money. And I'm like, why do you need the money? Why can't you just have the thing or the experience? Well, I have to pay for it. Well, what about winning it? Or what if it was gifted to you? Or what if it was, you know, and, and things work together. Like my sister had probably been thinking about, I'd really like to go on a honeymoon, but we don't have the budget right now. And I call her up and go, guess what? You're going on a honeymoon. So she gets her wish and she didn't need the money. She just gets to go. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to gift it to her. I didn't have the fun, but I get to take her. And we get to have that experience together. And it didn't cost any money. So I want to get that out of people's minds when they say, well, I want to do this or I have to have that. You don't. Why do you need the money? Don't focus on. Helene never focused on money she focused on what she wanted so she won everything her heart desired i realized after reading the books a lot of people say and i was saying it at first too that she won every contest she ever entered but that wasn't actually true she didn't but she won everything that she desired so for example there was one time where she wanted a new fry pan and she told her husband not to buy them and she entered all these giveaways and i don't know how many she did but she entered quite a few of them and then her husband gave her one for Christmas, and then she won three of the, I don't know how many she entered. Yeah. So yeah. then she was just going to save them and use them as gifts after, because she's like, well, <laughs> everybody wants a nice fry pan, the plug-in ones. I mean, they're fantastic, right? Yes. So she actually got everything her heart desired, but she didn't worry about where it was coming from. So she's like, what do I want in life? So it could have been, so she got one as a gift. She didn't have to have money for that. She wanted, you know, she she wanted and she won the other one. She, she got what she wanted, but she didn't have to spend money. So I want people to get out of the mindset of money. This what is... do you want and be open to how it shows up? You could win the lottery. You could get an inheritance. You could win it in a contest. You could get a raise. You could come into some funds or write a bestseller and make money or some, something there's all there's so many possibilities don't yeah. focus on the how she did project a car and it was a, a white car with a blue interior or a blue car with a white interior now, I'm, now I'm something like that i can't remember which yes. way okay yeah well okay so what happens i think it was a white car with a blue interior all right i happen to have one of those at one point in my life so i'm like oh i know what that was <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she, so she's, and anyway, so she's focused on that, and she wins. There are like fourteen cars, and she goes all over the place to to win these. And um, she talks about the, a little deception too. That occasionally she she knew that there was some shenanigans going on, and she could kind of call them on that. It wasn't a focus, but occasionally she'd pick up on that. Anyway, this time she she wins, but it's a blue truck. And that's not what she wanted. So she said, that's no problem. I just sold it and then got to use that money to buy the car I wanted. <laughs> exactly. Know? So that's what I mean. You don't, don't worry about how it comes. Just focus on the end result. And, and be open to something 
that might not even look like what you wanted, right? Because if you're, if you want to, to feel good and healthy and strong, then that's what you should be focusing on. And then just do the work behind it. You know, that's what a lot of people think is that there was no effort. That's like it's effortless to manifest this stuff. No, she filled out a lot of entry forms. She spent a lot of time filling out entry forms and decorating envelopes. There was effort on her part. Like it didn't just magically manifest. She even talked about that when she entered the car one. She said, oh, I got right to work. I sat down with my markers and her papers and started, you know, entering. So she put her energy into it. Um, if you want to get fit, well, you got to go to the gym. You got to put some effort into it. If you want a job, you have to go out and, you know, update your resume and start, you know, connecting with people and putting it out there and looking on the job, you know, connecting with companies. If you want to date, you got to get on the dating apps or tell people, you know, hey, I'm I'm looking for somebody. Do you know somebody? You ha- You can't just, it's not, it doesn't manifest in a void. You, you do have to put some effort in. <laughs> You do marketing. And so that's a lot of your background, too, comes in the into play with the marketing, how to be aware of, you know, what you're projecting, what you're what you're putting out there and managing your business as in managing me. I am as my, you know, my little my person is a business. And so how am I putting myself out there? Am I putting my energy in a way that I'm going to see a result? Or am I kind of neutralizing it or in some ways, you know, submarining and sabotaging myself because I'm not putting myself in a winning state? And that's huge. You're able to see a bigger picture than just, okay, I'm going to win a contest. So when I'm listening to you and I know your background, I know you have a lot more of these elements that you've already factored in by thinking, okay, this is how this is going to work and this is what you've seen from your experience, the results. You, you didn't just win one contest this year. You've been doing this for a while. And I have to be the first to say, I've not mastered Helene's technique of winning as many. Now, I also haven't been entering as much lately um, to to win prizes because I've been focused on writing three books. So my energy has gone elsewhere. Um, but when I do focus on it, I can I can usually hone in. And also, it's the circumstances around the world also affect you. When the pandemic hit, contest pages became blank. Like, you went to places and there was nothing like they just literally disappeared they were all gone so there was nothing to enter for a while it was very disheartening yeah yeah like oh and because you also are part of a bigger like me as a human you as a human are part of a bigger collective and so things happen within that collective that you know you have to go with and so yeah there was nothing to enter for a while and we never experienced anything like that and so we had to you know, just go with that. Okay, so I'm not going to enter a well, while. What am I going to do? I start writing more books again. That's actually when I happened to start uh, republishing her book. And she had said to me when I went down to visit her. So that's how I got down to visit her. I had her on my podcast like you did, but I was very cheeky. And I said to her, uh, I want to come visit you. And I still don't know what possessed me to say that. So clearly there was something. And she said no. And I went, okay, because I figured, well, I asked. And she called me back three days later and said, your guides are so loud, you better come visit me. And I kind of chuckled because I thought, oh, I'm loud in real life. Of course, my guides are loud. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, that just makes perfect sense to me. Uh Um, And when I was down there, she said to me, you have to teach maneuvers for witchcraft because no one else is going to do it anymore. And I really believe her and I had a full contract because he taught literally thousands and thousands of people. But she asked me to continue her work. So there was clearly a contract between us for this work to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Because to me, that, especially knowing her history, that wasn't random. But I had gone into my dark night. I had got a divorce right after, and I did nothing with it until I finally started coming out of it. And thankfully, it had waited for me. That's the other reason. At the same time, I contacted her son and bought the rights to all of her work. Someone else had contacted him, but he said, no, I'd rather give it to you. So even he knew I had the sole contract with his mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
even when other people said, I want to do it, he's like, no, it has to go to her. You had done some so, shows with her, though, for a while. Two, two, just two. I had her on my show, and I was the world's worst interviewer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the things you regret in life. I wish I could go back and fix that. But, oh, yeah, I've got a few know, of those. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> it there. is what it is. I can't fix it. She's gone. All I can do is republish her work and pray that it gets into the people's, the right people's hands that need to hear her message. And that's all I can do. I can't go back and fix my terrible interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's okay. That's okay. That's how you got to know her, all right? So if that hadn't happened, no matter what the quality is, you wouldn't have made the connection. Right. So Exactly. And I hope people are liking her work. Like, I didn't know she had four books. I knew she had three and then when her son sent me the books, there's one called A Man Called Friday. It's like a parable. And believe it or not, I haven't even read it yet. I've kind of been saving it until I'm ready to redo it. There is no digital copy. So when I got her books, the only digital copy was the Name It and Claim It game. She kept updating it till the, till the year she passed away at home. Let me see. And I've got would, 2003. I've got the revised, updated 2003, and she signed it. Okay. So she updated it till 2010. The file I got was dated 2010. Wow. Oh, so man. in those days, the computers weren't like they are now. And she didn't have the skill set. So she would update it with different things. And she would just use the return key and the space bar. Mm-hmm. And then she didn't have the, the editing. They didn't have the editing software like they do now. So she would just plunk something onto the end of a chapter. <laughs> so when I got a hold of it, I, I went, oh, this doesn't flow very well. We're going to fix this. <laughs> and so I I put, you know, like she had a chapter, uh, Maneuvers for Wishcraft, that led right into spec. But spec was somewhere else in the book. And I'm like, no, no, no. We got to move this here. Yeah, yeah. Make flow. it flow. And, because they didn't have the stuff. Like, I'm just amazed. Like, I just think in my brain, she had old software on an old laptop, like, 15 years ago. Think about what the laptop's like 15 years ago. And she's in her mid-80s, and she's still writing. Like, mm-hmm. you've mm-hmm. got to give her credit for that. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. She had so much to say. I mean, the, the, when like in contact with other realms, she talks about the thought forms, creating a thought form, about being invisible. Oh, they work. Yes. They work. That's how she used to co- communicate. Well, I think the thought form... Slash mental telepathy was how she communicated with Jose Silva. Mm-hmm. I just loved her. And she was a bit crazy. Like she talked about levitating and yes. being invisible with Paul Twitchell. And in her other book, she talks about new dancing and confession. She uh. said, well, it is a confessional. It says it right on the cover of the book. Like you're, you shouldn't be surprised at what I'm saying <laughs> in this book. <laughs> She had a great sense of humor. I mean, um, I, cause I talked to her a little bit about what I was doing and she's, cause I was doing some writing and, and trying to write my stuff down. She said, okay, first thing, does it have humor? I thought, well, no, I didn't include any jokes. <laughs> but she said, it has to have humor. And, but that was her thing of, of being, you know, of having fun. And she, Helen Keller, you know, life is a daring adventure or not at all. It's this, that her, her own mindset was to bring that humor element into it. It didn't mean she didn't have challenges. It just meant that the perspective was, if you didn't enjoy it, why bother? Well, yes. And even when she went in for surgery, she tried to keep it light. Like she had went into one doctor and she had a, she had a tumor and, um, and she needed it removed. And, 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 uh, she went into the doctor and she was being her quirky self. And she said, well, is it possible that I'm pregnant? And he was deadpan. And he said, um, ma'am, you're 62. I don't think you could be pregnant. Have you had a brain scan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, didn't yeah get, he didn't get her at all. And she's trying to be, she's trying to lighten the mood because she knew this is serious. I have to go in for surgery and, you know, this needs to be done. And this is not just, you know, a walk in the park. It's going to be serious. So. I need to bring some humor to it. And he didn't appreciate it at all. I'm going to paraphrase her response because he was doing work at that point, reconstructing her nose, her face and all that from the accident. And so she said, yes, uh, she, she wrote him a letter because she knew that, um, that he had, had not been quite so humorous. And so she, she had a response all uh, prepared for him. And it was, I really appreciate the work on you've done on my nose and I'll be paying through it now. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. She, she had yeah, she had a good sense of humor, and her husband's like, "You're not going to appreciate that." She did it anyway, and it's like they're just probably like shaking their head. But that's I think it's a good way to go through life. Like, yes, nobody nobody's opted out of the human experience. And I think that's one of the things people forget, especially in this, you know, social media world we live in. We look at everybody's posts and little videos and their life is perfect. You know, they've got the, the beautiful living room and the bikini body and they're traveling to Bali and they're doing this and they're doing that. And you think, Oh my gosh, you know, you're shuffling out of bed with your bunny slippers and you're looking out at the snow or at least that's where I am. And, you know, it's not, life's not exciting. I sit at my desk and, you know, I don't have this like glamour life, but you forget people are only showing you the the part that they want you to see. The Zoom photos with nothing in the background. I'm like, I can't find a wall that does has nothing in the background that's perfectly clean. I, I really. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm I struggling with that, that myself. I'm, we have a very small house. And so <laughs> I have, I run a business. So I have stuff that I use for my business. I have envelopes and books that I mail out and yeah. things and I, these authors I put that on my vision board I would love to have a space like that but in the meantime I'm thinking I'm just gonna buy one of those um, green screen frames and buy the, the sheet that looks like a library and just put it behind me <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of it so I'll have the background it should just be in front of a wall with a filing cabinet and some pictures yeah well what I do- hide it I want, you know, some. I'm looking around to see what I've got here. I've got my Bigfoot lunchbox, and I've got a little Bigfoot uh, little character. I've got an angel over here and, and a picture I made with the angel St. Francis that turned out into a really cool collage accidentally. And then across the room, I've got my UFO um, UFO guy, my alien in my Bigfoot mug, and I've got my rabbit pulling out of a hat that's a little stuffed animal. Um, this is just the, the overview. My Ziggy Bank over there, who has nothing in him, but, you know, he's he's got hopes. <laughs> Oh, I know. I have all kinds of crazy things. I've got a lucky cat and a little angel I call Trudy. And I have, you know, I have card decks and books and notepads and, and jars of coins because, you know, you're supposed to feel wealthy with the coins around <laughs> the coin collection, yeah. These are things that make it fun. And, and you know, yeah, this is the room is full, loaded with books. But the, the, the thing that I think, you know, in the, the social media – what I like to see is something that's more busy that has that has a real life view of it because when it's all empty, it's like that isn't real life. You know, that's just a page that's waiting to be filled up. And and so I I don't judge my own success by what I see on social media because I everything's a work in progress, and um, that's part of why I like looking at these things. When Helene did her work, she really really was inspired by other people who were thinkers. And so when she went out and, um, you know, did work for Jose Silva, when she did work for these folks, she took notes and she took it to the next level and then tried to share it. And I think that, you know, that's what we're trying to do right now is these are, are ways to go with your own thinking that will improve you to help you be able to think proactive instead of reactive. And, you know, that's the whole point. That's how we learn. That's how we evolve as a society, as a species, is to learn from each other. Oh, how can I make this better? Exactly. And everybody passes the baton. Like she learned from these people and then she took it and she taught and then she passed me the baton. And there'll be a time where I pass the baton on to somebody. And I don't know who that is yet, but I know that when it's ready to be passed, that person's going to show up and it's just going to, you know, you're going to build on the next person. And she even knew that people weren't ready for this stuff back in the seventies because when she wrote her first book, Contesting the Name It and Claim It Game, her guy said, this isn't the book you're supposed to write. And she's like, I know. Because she knew that people weren't ready to hear about how she levitated and, and mm-hmm. how to go invisible and do all that stuff. Because this is really woo-woo for the time. Yeah. And yeah. so she packaged it with the, you know, it's really funny. I did a, I did a little video on how her book is a metaphysical book with some sweepstakes in it. And my book is a sweepstakes book with a little bit of metaphysical in it because I have an attracting luck chapter talking about, because people always said to me, how are you so lucky? So I put in the attracting luck chapter on telling people how to do it. But here's the thing I figured out in the new book that I'm writing and changing it from attracting luck to being lucky because I realized I'm guiding people the wrong way. It doesn't come from the outside. It comes from the inside. Yeah. So you, 
you're being lucky versus attracting luck, if that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You're showing up to receive it. Okay, here I am. <laughs> right. And I think it's, you have contracts with people to, to show people different things. And George, my, he is so grounded in this is how things have to be. You have to put your nose to the grindstone and you have to work hard and then you make money and that's how it works. And I'm like, I come into his life and I'm like, no, you can do stuff and it shows up. And he's like, no. And then I win things. And uh-huh. he just shakes his head. She fills like, out a form and it shows up. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> how does she do that? I came out this morning and I went, because I was really, like he was, we had um we had internet issues the day of the Super Bowl, and so the TV was lagging because it's all on the Wi-Fi, and it kept lagging. And he's like, "I want to change it." And I'm like, "No, I, I get the question. I don't care how much it lags. I'm going to sit here and wait patiently while the TV lags because I'm doing this contest. Uh-huh. I'm winning a trip. I'm winning. And he's like dang shaking it. his head at me. <laughs> I'm winning. Dang it! And so four hours of this. Oh, and gosh. finally, he shut off the TV. He's like, he's like, it's over. The game is over. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'll stop now. <laughs> um, so he finally stopped it. But I was so determined. And then, so I did. Again, you had, to, I had to put in the effort. I sat there, and every time there was a commercial, I was taking pictures of the TV and following the rules of the promotion. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I put in the, I put in the effort. You know, I was. Nature, I literally almost ran out the battery on my phone, even though I just told people, make sure your phone was completely charged before you start. Well, of course. Yeah. Advice. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm like, dang, why? I just told people that. Why don't I have a cable around me? <laughs> um, yeah, I had to put in the effort. And then when I came out, I said, see, it it was worth it. We're, you know, and he's just shaking his head at me like, like yeah, I should do yeah. that. And it's fun. I like to do the fun things. Like we had a, I do something called pin code hunting. There's a lot of promotions that have codes in the summer and I can't drink that much pop or eat that much chocolate or, you know, eat that many bags of chips. That's not healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I always support the sponsor. I do buy some, but at the amount that I like to enter, no, that would be completely unhealthy and, and unaffordable. So I go around, we have a recycle box program in the city I live in and people throw out all their codes. They don't, think to enter because they don't see it they don't see the opportunity in front of them i highly recommend the book there's two books called one is called conscious luck by gay hendrick and the other one is the luck factor by dr richard wiseman and they talk about how to see how when you change your mind you tune your mind you know it's like when you go to buy a car and you're looking at you know like a, a little white volkswagen or something and the next thing you know you see like every white car around you everybody's driving white cars all of a sudden yes, yes and you see you suddenly see like how the why because your brain has been focused on it and it's now allowing those things that you had previously filtered out to come in so when you start looking for winning opportunities i can spot the word win at 100 paces and so that's one of the things they talk about so people even though they have the word win in front of them they don't see it they just literally throw the bottle away or throw the package away and I go and I know how to spot it and I pick it up and I take it home and I win lots of stuff and I hit an instant. It was all instant, very not easy to get. And it was, and I kind of like, this is where it's a little bit opposite of lean. I don't always focus on specific prizes. I kind of sometimes like the universe to surprise me, to mm. surprise me with a prize. Uh-huh. And uh, we won a hot tub and that was fun. <laughs> So it's outside the back. We could have drained it for the winter. It's too cold to go out there. Uh-huh. So now we're just maintaining it until the spring. Yeah, it's minus 20 where I live. We're not going out into the backyard. Okay, no thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, no. <laughs> yeah, part of it, though, is that when you're saying you like surprises, too, it's just basically you're still a winner. That's it. You're a winner. Yeah, I like that part of it. And I think that's one of the things I tell people is you have to make the hobby your own. So Helene... In her day, and it's also changed. The way that you enter now was nothing like how she used to enter. The, the way she used to enter almost doesn't exist anymore. So she, you know, she would fill out entry blanks in the grocery store. And I don't remember the last time. I think it's been almost 20 years since I've seen one in the grocery store. Like, you don't see them They anymore. don't do that, yeah. They don't do that anymore. And so it's a lot different. Um, so I, 
I, some things I specifically put it out to the universe, like, hey, I want to take my sister on a hanging. That's a very specific prize. Or I want to win. I'm on, I put it on my vision board this year. I want a front load washer dryer. I'm, I want that front load washer dryer. I really don't like top load. It works fine, but it's just not my preference. So I put it out there that that's what I'm going to have. But yeah. other than that, I'm open to whatever shows up because I think it's fun. I've been to events that I wouldn't buy tickets to normally and you go and you have an absolute ball. Um, you know, different groups and concerts, different, you know, events, just things that aren't in your everyday life and they're fantastic. You know, just before we had, we had lockdowns up and down and we won tickets to see a fellow from Big Sugar come and do a show in a local club and we went. It was great. I wouldn't have normally purchased a ticket to see him because I don't know his music as well as I probably should have. And he was fantastic. I'm like, how did I not follow this guy before? This is great. And I like that because that's something I wouldn't have thought to choose. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like the universe to sometimes go, hey, why don't you go out on Friday night and have a nice date and try this and just see what fun. you think. Okay, so for people yeah, who, because you do, you coach people. And so you know, Contest Queen, um, best way to connect to find out more about your own background and your products and your books is it the website um ideal majesty or well con okay so what i did well it, it's funny i kind of i got guided to actually split my company in two so i was originally just the contest queen and i would teach people how to win and i also did sweepstakes marketing but it became obvious for me as a marketer as a business person that uh companies didn't understand that contest queen also did social marketing right right two stakes marketing and i had um i had actually it's very funny i had an intuitive reading with robert ohato he was kind of a bucket list item so when i got a divorce um i had a reading with him and he said you know contest queen isn't the mountain for you you're, there's lots of things you're supposed to still teach and do and other things and so my little brain goes okay i need to set up another business so I went, I just booked everything. I got the URL, I got the socials, I got business cards, and then I sat on it and I didn't do anything with it. And then a year later, Robert called me back and said, I want to hire you to do my marketing. And he was my first customer in that business. I thought, that's full circle. The universe has a sense of humor too. <laughs> <laughs> and so after six years of putting it on my to-do list, I finally built a website. So now... Contest Queen is just teaching people how to find, organize, enter, and win. And Idea Majesty is twofold right now. I will come up with a third site, but right now it's all of Helene's other books because they're not contest related. So I didn't want to have them on the contest site. And um, all my sweepstakes marketing. And at some point, I think I'm going to have to have a third website just for books. I'll have like three. But I know that's how that an, goes. That's yeah. a whole. Yeah, that's another. And I, I had somebody say, "Well, you really should split it up." I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it took me six years to build this website. I am not building a third website right now." <laughs> <laughs> that's the other. That's another hill on the mountain, and I'll wait till I get to that hill. And um, because I'm a Capricorn, and I'm like the the mountain goat, right? Always just you know up the hill, and sometimes boulders hit me and push me down, but sometimes you know, grace comes under my wings and flies me up a little bit. And and that's how it is. That's how everybody's journey is. But people only see that, like, you know, people think I win everything. I, they're like, you're so lucky you win everything. And I'm like, no, you don't see the work. And the, I don't. Well, but that's, that's the Instagram life. That's yeah. That's the other thing too, though, that when you see what kind of work it involves, then you can start planning and making it happen. You know, sometimes it isn't even about, well, it's too much work. It's, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. How do I even, you know, get in that mindset? And so when you've seen somebody who's been there, done that and get experience behind you, then you start seeing how you can make it work for yourself in your own life. Well, that's what I tell people. They get overwhelmed with the social media sweepstakes and this and that. And they're like, this is too much. I can't do it. And I say, start. Start small, and I say start with single entry sweepstakes because everybody can only enter once. 
and then you forget about it. So start there, just do those, and then keep going. And if something isn't working for you, let it go. I had one woman, I, I give away a free one-on-one class with me every month as my, as something fun to do. And every single person that I have taught for three years that has won this prize was not organized. So I know that's the number one thing people aren't doing. And number two, uh, this one woman, she says to me in her, in her session, she says, you know, I really struggle with Instagram. Every week for one night, I sit and enter Instagram contests all night and I've never won one. And I said, so stop. She goes, stop. I said, why are you putting energy towards something that's not working for you? Take that whole evening and say, what is working for me? And take that whole evening and put it there. She says, but all those Instagram contests, I'm like, you're not winning them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let somebody else win them. Yeah. I know other people that do very well on the Instagram giveaways. But let them win them. And you go put your energy where it is working. There's so many sweepstakes. This is what people don't understand. There's literally so many sweepstakes at any given time that you could literally enter 24-7 and still not enter everything. There is enough prizes for everybody. So find the ones that you like to enter and just enter those. You don't have, it's, you know, you don't have to make it a big, it's supposed to be fun. If it ever feels like work or you don't like it, stop. Okay, this is the million dollar question, or maybe the $10 million question. The Publishers Clearing House, how do you win the big, big prize for Publishers Clearing House? Everybody wants to know. Okay, so I had a controversy around this. I told people in a video one time not to enter it because the odds were so bad. I think the odds, I'm going off the top of my head, are 1.2 billion to one to win the Publishers Clearinghouse. And the odds, I think, for the uh, Powerball is 1.4 million. Oh. Or 143 million to one or something. Anyway, your odds are way better to enter the Powerball and the Mega Millions than it is to enter the Publishers Clearinghouse. And then I had somebody say to me, well, you tell everybody if they put their mind to it, they could win. And I'm like, well, technically that's correct. But I also think, why are you going to waste your energy on something that's so far out there when you could enter something that's local? You know, Richard um, Luttig, who is in the Guinness Book of Workers for winning the grand prize in lotteries only bought the state lottery tickets. He never bought the national ones because he said my odds are better, which I still technically don't understand how that works because I'm not a statistician. But he always only bought the state lottery tickets. Because he said my odds of winning are better. Now, statistically, I don't understand how that works in numbers, but it works for him. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what people want to know. I said, okay, so if I'm going to enter this stuff, the only thing about Publishers Clearinghouse is you don't have to buy anything. Right, and you shouldn't have, yeah, so this is the other thing. I I don't buy anything either. Like, when I do the pin code contest, I do buy some, because, I mean, we're going to drink the ginger ale and the, the colas and the whatever. Like, we do like the chips, you know, don't get us... You know, so and the cereal and whatever else has the code. I do buy some, the chocolate bars. Mm-hmm. Just and I do large, buy some to yeah, enter those. The large quantities. Yeah, so I always support the sponsor. I mean, um, you know, and then sometimes I give it away. Like my grandmother's in a nursing home. And so what I do is I buy the chocolate bars because you buy two and you take a picture of their seat and you send it in and you get an entry into the contest. And then... Every week or so, I mail her sometimes a little card and some stuff, and I'll throw a chocolate bar in there for her. And so she gets some mail, and I get an entry, and everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So, you know, I do, I do support the sponsors, but then, you know, there's also the no-purchase entry, or I'll, get, uh, or I'll go out in the summer and find the codes and enter those, and it, it's fun. And I make it part of the hobby. I figure, well, why go to the gym? I can walk around my neighborhood for free all summer, <laughs> get exercise, uh-huh. and win stuff. Why would I? Why wouldn't I do it? You know, and I listen to podcasts. I triple. I triple my thing. I'm walking. I'm coding. And I'm listening to podcasts every morning. I love it. I'm multitasking at its finest. Yes. And it's fun. And it feels good. And it's fun. 
And I know all the bottle guys, they're out there collecting the bottles and they're like, they always look at me and they go, and I have the smallest bag because I'm only collecting codes, right? Uh -huh. No bigger than a purse. And they have like some of them are on bicycles with bags off them. Some of them have trolleys. Some of them push grocery carts. And I got nothing. And they're like, are you collecting bottles? I'm like, no. <laughs> they're always so confused. <laughs> what am I doing out there? <laughs> okay, well, that's good to keep them guessing. It's, it's fun. And that's the thing. Helene always made it fun. Like if you read her stories, she would go out with girl like the one time they did all the grocery stores and they had the free promotion in the local grocery stores. Her and her girlfriend went out. They went to all the different grocery stores. They took turns entering. Um, they even put a neighbor's name in because they knew it would be good for her to have some. So they were giving paying it forward. They had lunch together. They had a ball and they won stuff, but they spent the whole day having fun. And that's how it should be. The book, you're still, you're working on another one now. What, what's available for people to, for, for your books? Right. So I, my How to Win Cash, Car Strips and More is still available and I'm updating it and I'm calling it Prizes, Prizes Everywhere with, you know, new stories and new uh, adventures because the um, How to Win Cash, Car Strips and More is only available in Canada and U.S. And so Prizes, Prizes Everywhere is going to be my first global seat stakes book. And global. that should be out this spring. Yeah, because it's going to be available worldwide. The other one's only available in North America, in Canada and the U.S. And so I realized the hobby is global. People in India love to win sweepstakes. Did you know that? No, I didn't. But I can imagine it's, that it's would make sense. Huge. It's huge there. It's a huge hobby in India. Who knew? All right. So for Helene's books. They're all global and you can get them on, you know, all your channels, Amazon, Kindle, Kobo. Google Books, Apple okay. Books, like just search it out and all of her books can be found everywhere. Okay. And they're worth a weight in gold. I'm so glad that you picked this up because I mean, like the one I got with uh, the name it and claim it, it's, it's like a recipe book. It's, it's got the real cool little binder on it that, yeah, they, you don't find those anywhere. Oh yeah. That was when she was doing it herself. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. She would, she would print it out at home and stir locks it. I love it. Over 2 million copies sold is what was printed on this one. And again, this has been this has been a while. I probably got it in maybe 2006. Maybe that was 2008. Anyway, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do with your life, if you're listening now, a good start is believing in yourself. That's what Helene preached. That's what a lot of the people who are winners know, that if you believe in yourself, that's the first step, and then everything else is gravy. And she gotcha. also said a prayer, and I like this prayer. It was, if you look out into the world and see the Instagram world and are concerned about it, just say what she said. What God has done for others, God now does for me and more. The Friday book, you're, when is that coming out? I'm going to do it last. So here, I'm going to write prizes, prizes everywhere. And then someone suggested, and it was a good idea, to create a workbook for the contest being the Name It and Claim It game. Because... People do really struggle with spec. So I'm going to create a workbook for that book, a companion piece, so that people who are reading it can, I think people have a hard time digging out her nuggets. I want to make that an easier thing for them. And then I'm going to do her last book, and it's a, and it's a parable, and it's called A Man Called Friday. And it's about, a, I think it's a time, time traveler book. Okay, now you've got my interest. Yeah, it starts out with this ad that says, wanted, male, 40 to 50 years of age, must be free to travel, no family obligations for a one-year contract, sense of adventure, ability to do field research required, call Beth for an interview. What's Beth's number? Well, I don't think, I don't think it exists, but I wouldn't want to dial it. So four persons going to, I'm going to have to check it before I print it to make sure it's <laughs> real. That always gets us in trouble. Okay. All right. We're going to come back and we'll find out where, where this ends up and we want to know about the book. All right. So when you, when you get this done, then um, we're going to be chatting. Oh yeah. Again. Yeah. We'll chat again. I, I will send you, I will send you copies of different things as they come out. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here waiting. All right. Uh, again, hey, if you're listening, thank you so much. Carolyn Wilman. this is this is just um, a, a treat because 
Helene Hansel had so much fantastic advice in her books, and I was thrilled when I saw that you had picked up the gauntlet and were running with it because this stuff is priceless and it is timeless. Anything you want to add before we sign off? Just read her books over and again because you will catch something every time you read it that you didn't read it before. And I know that because even as I've been editing them, I do that. Me too. I've got them. Same thing. Same thing. All right. Thank you. I'm going to put some links on the blog at talkingtonightlights.com. So the links will be there. They're also in the description for the show. Take care. See ya. And think the best thoughts. That's what comes back to you.